Hello there. Uh, very good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Politics. I'm your host, Eddie Lane. And of course, uh, over the last few hours, um, quite some development in Guyana, uh, politically and otherwise. I have with me this evening, uh, no stranger to this program, Says Gunraj. Says is a commissioner, is a government appointed commissioner to the Guyana Elections Commission, an attorney at law. And I, I, I can safely say, um, a forest politician in general says good evening and welcome to the program good evening eddie and good evening to your viewers a pleasure to be here as usual so we're going to touch on two critical issues this evening by the way i am not too sure if the period you were off you went and um uh, changed to a white shirt um <laughs> i'd come back but um says we have two critical issues to deal with uh, tonight one uh, the developments at the Ghana Elections Commission. But before I, I address that particular issue, I want us to spend some time to talk about uh, the COVID-19 vaccination um, and the, the, the recent developments that took place. You know, um, there was this big hullabaloo a few days ago uh, when Harmon, in his usual lying ways, uh, came out and attempted to, to put a damper, so to speak, on the vaccination program by claiming that uh, vaccines were fake. And uh, well, he started by making the accusation that Diana uh, purchased overpriced vaccines. I mean, overpricing is something that's very synonymous with APNU, all the years they spent, five years they spent in office. But he attempted to put that allegation to the PV, that that allegation didn't stick. Um, it didn't really resonate with people because it was easily and quickly debunked. Then he moved to make allegations about uh, the vaccines uh, being um, the vaccines being fake and so on. But before I bring you in, says I maybe I I quickly share for those in the public domain who may not have had an opportunity uh, to to um, see the statement released by the Ministry of Health and the accompanying letter. So if I could quickly say what the Ministry of Health had done is that they had contacted the Russian Direct Investment Fund um, to get information to, after Harmon claimed that the vaccines were fake and all sorts of things, uh, contact was made with the um, Russian Direct Investment Fund uh, to match the batch numbers of the vaccines that were being used by Guyana um, to ensure that the vaccines received were indeed emanating from uh, the company. So the letter which was released today, they uh, addressed to the Minister of Health, is titled Confirmation Letter, and it reads, and I quote, Dear Sirs, we would like to confirm hereby the authenticity of the shipments of gum covid vac are the various, uh, sorry, adenovirus va vector vaccine containing component one, recombinant stereotype 26, adenoviral particles containing the S protein gene of the SARS CoV 2 virus and containing component two, recombinant stereotype five, adenoviral particles containing the S protein gene of the SARS CoV 2, that is the Sputnik V vaccine. With listed with below listed batch batches that have been dispatched uh, to the UAE for further transportation to the countries where Arugulf received authorization for selling and distribution of the Sputnik V, including Guyana. What this means, there is a long table says that that outlines um, you know the the, the batch numbers and the, the, the amount of vaccines etc. and the date of delivery um as well as the expiry date so a lot of data the director general of rdif simply said that harman you were misleading that the vaccines he didn't say that in his letter but that the content of the letter verifying authenticating the vaccines to guyana has now put to rest those fallacious claims that mr harman has made um which could have serious impact on guyana's vaccination program safe eddie 
there are so many comments that I want to make about this particular issue, and I think I may have to prioritize them and itemize them uh, so that I don't get I don't get lost. First of all, our health and the health of of our nation ought to be the primary concern of every uh, person in authority in Ghana. Uh, Guyana, as I said on the last program in which I appeared with you, has been has excelled in so far as it relates to the vaccination program that it has rolled out. Uh, in fact, the vaccination program that has been rolled out rolled out and executed in Guyana, I believe, rivals that of many many countries, including some first world countries. The level of vaccination per capita that we have been able to achieve in this country uh, is excellent. However, however, while that may be so, there are aspects uh, of our population that has, uh, that has harbored some amount of doubt and uh, displayed some amount of skepticism in, in relation to the acceptance of the vaccine. And with all of the, with all of the uncertainty, the, the, the relative newness, etc., of the vaccine, some of that can be understood. But when you see persons who ought to know better, persons who have, access, who have access to information, and I'll get back to this, persons with access to information, and this general access to information in one moment. Much more important than all of that, persons who have availed themselves of this uh, facility, and I'm speaking directly about Joseph Harmon, the leader of the opposition, to for those persons to come out and throw a damper on the vaccination program and to take steps that is like that are likely to affect the uh, the acceptance and acceptability of the program it tells you about the mindset of these persons with whom we are dealing you are speaking about affecting the life and the health of our nation and that ought not to be tinkered with that ought not to be countenance in any way shape or form but that brings me to the other that brings me to the other aspect It is understandable that as a politician, you may harbor doubts about the level of expenditure and, and all of the uh, associated issues um, regarding the vaccines. I have no difficulty with that. In fact, I appreciate the fact that an opposition would be interested in how the nation's coffers are being affected by this expenditure. However, there are mechanisms by which uh, that can be addressed. And one such mechanism that has uh, been available to the, to the opposition was the parliament. You'd recall the Honorable Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Frank Anthony, being grilled, and I use that word grilled deliberately, extensively in the parliament about the procurement, about the sourcing, about the cost, why it costs so much, and all of that. And I believe that the, the uh, Minister of Health, Dr. Anthony, took time out patiently explained the entire process by which uh, the vaccines were received, disclosed the source of the vaccine, disclosed the, uh, the, the, the business arrangements that were concerned with the acquisition of the vaccine. And Dr. Anthony was not the first politician of the government or the first member of government who did that. General Vice President Dr. Barry Jagdio did that uh, last week or the other week. Uh, at a press conference. So this knowledge or this information has not been a cloistered um, issue that has been locked away in some black back closet. It has always been on the front, front burner. The government has always been forthcoming with information in relation to the vaccines, the source of the vaccines, the cost and all of that. But even worse, even worse, and this is the third issue, it tells the scant regard, it tells the scant regard that the opposition has for the populace of Guyana. If anything that will characterize this age in which we exist, then, it will be the information and the readiness with which information can be accessed in, in, in this era. That being said, it is not, we don't exist in a time 
when you perhaps had to get a telegram, you, had, you remember the, the, the office used to be a G, uh, bank again, a building there, and send a telegram that will take perhaps days to get to Russia. And when it reaches to Russia, it probably had to thaw off and, and, and go through a process and, and, and all of that, and then get returned here. So, so probably six months later, you'll get a response. Communication has become instantaneous. That information is readily available. I am sure informally, Dr. Anthony might have been able to present that information the next day or within hours of, 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 of it. But the official channels, of course, take a little longer. It boggles the mind that the leader of the opposition will think so lowly of the of the exposure and of the um, intelligence of the Guyanese populace to think that he can spew such uh, untruths and think that it, he will get away with it and think that uh, there will be no uh, debunking of that in short order. And that is what was done. And thankfully, that information is now available to the popul public, the Guyanese public. And I would hope that it goes a far way in encouraging those persons who were otherwise misled and who might have uh, harbored additional skepticism in accepting the vaccine to now accept it with open arms and to ensure that they do the right things by themselves, to do the right things, sorry, by themselves and to ensure that they are vaccinated, thereby protecting themselves against the ravages of this pandemic in which we exist. You know, importantly, you touched on a couple of things. Um, and time and again, every attempt by Harmon and, and, and his, 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 his gang uh, to mislead, to misinform, to, 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 to spread all sorts of to inaccurate, inaccuracies, <clears throat> every occasion, it takes a few minutes, literally, in, in most cases, for them to be debunked. <laughs> and if one is to look at what this letter did, essentially, the letter from, um, I think the, the gentleman's name is Alexander Christio, Christiaco, uh, who is the Director General of the RDIF. It essentially dismantles the malicious and reckless statement by Harman, that blatant lie where he attempted to tell this nation that the COVID-19 vaccines are fake. By the way, vaccines that you mentioned, he took. Uh, the batch numbers that were issued by RDIF were matched back there. It is now, Harmon has a responsibility. Harmon's supporters and all Guyanese need to call him Harmon. He has a responsibility to apologize to this nation. Maybe, maybe Harmon don't know says, but the damage maybe that his statement could have already caused. It could have been, and God forbid, it could have been people, many, many people who attempted to take the vaccine, you know, turned away. Now it takes a little bit more to convince them to return to take the vaccines. That's the reality. And it is happening as a result of a statement being made by someone who took the vaccine. So Harmon has a responsibility to apologize to this nation. And if Harmon wants to, if he wants to, to, to make amends to the people of this country, he has to come clean. He has to come clean and he must be and should be held accountable by his, even his supporters as to why he made such a reckless and irresponsible statement that can put, uh, this end well, well, a lot of not the entire nation, but a lot of people at risk, all in the interest of scoring a few cheap political points. The reality is, this matter, as far as I'm concerned, says, has been put to rest. The information is there, it has been debunked. Whatever he said would have been debunked. So he now has a responsibility to really complete. I, I first of all, would not hold my breath. I and wouldn't wait either. for uh, an apology or any such thing uh, coming from the leader of the opposition. Uh, apologies and, and holding yourself to a higher standard and taking 
responsibility from your action for your actions require people of a certain ilk and i don't believe uh and i say this very respectfully i don't believe those qualities exist within those cutter of the cutter of persons um, that form the opposition but you know when when you think the more you think about it the recklessness that is involved in that statement having taken the vaccine yourself it is one of the two things you don't value your own life and health or you don't value that of uh, the populace and i believe that the the very an analysis of the very actions shows whose health is valued and whose health is not valued but this recklessness and the effects of it may not be readily seen but i want to warn and remind uh you and our viewers Eddie, that the eventually and in the sh near future you're going to see the effects of that recklessness and you're going to see the uh, response of their own supporters to that recklessness the the chickens are already coming home to roost you're already seeing you're already seeing the exodus commencing uh, what is on the horizon is even greater and I'm not trying to be prophetic when I say that this evening it's a natural consequence, a natural reaction to that recklessness. Right-minded people will distance themselves uh, from such recklessness. And, and, and you know what is sad, what is funny? So the whole argument about the vaccines being faked has been debunked. The Director General of the Russian company, um, I think that's the company that is responsible for the distribution of the vaccine, has debunked Hammond's claim. So what do you think is the new trick? Or the usual, they go to their usual fallback when people expose them. That is, to begin to smear people. So the attack is front on, on the gentleman, just because he exposed Hammond's lie and misinformation so they're all over the place about the man's childhood about the man's neighbor his dogs his cats everything everything they're smearing well, out Eddie, that's the usual trick <laughs> Eddie, i'll have to be very careful when i say this uh but up to today i had to say this to somebody uh in, in the vernacular you know in the and especially in the um in the acting world and so on. The minute that you fall out of favor with some uh, with some big wig or some uh, some authority or some director, quote unquote, your sex tape is leaked. So this Russian gentleman has to wonder when his sex tape will be leaked. <laughs> exactly, because that is that is the most operandi of the PNC, the AP, and UAFC. We have seen it for so many of the observers who came here and who, 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 who you know, uh, chastised them for attempting to rig the elections. The minute someone said something, the minute, the minute uh, Prime Minister Mia Motley made her statement, Shara Duncan and his gang were all over the place trying to, to dig dirt, so to speak, on her. The same thing with, with Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez and every other person. The, 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 the ambassador of the U.S., the, the, the Canadian High Commissioner, the, the British High Commissioner, every single person. These guys always have a story, as you call it. They always have a, a quote-unquote sex tape to leak on people. So they're after the gentleman already, uh, starting to attack him because he exposed uh, the lies and misinformation of Harmon. You know, and, and that is what the opposition tries on. They thrive on misinformation, lies, divisive rhetoric, and they when you can't, when you know, when you reject them, 
they attack you. Uh, look, look at look at, at what they did to the ambassadors and and the high commissioners and 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 they did to the to the international observers and to so many other people. You know, once you once you go against them, once you expose them, there is always there is always um, this attempt to to attack you. <laughs> and there's an interesting story in the Guyana Times, though, which exposed again uh, Harmon. And what is interesting? What is interesting because the, the information is available. Harmon is attempting to deny that he didn't imply the government made the right decision to buy this public vaccine. These guys says, I don't know if this is the way in which they operate. Um, you know, they wake up and they decide, I'm going to go out there and speak today. There's no thought, no reasoning. So they wake up and they speak and they go back, they sleep, they wake up the next day, they forget what they said the day before, then they come back and they speak. It, it is it is total irresponsibility and comical the way they operate like i said eddie the proof will be in the pudding at the appropriate time and that appropriate time if i dare say is very very soon uh persons will not countenance this sort of behavior for too much longer Persons are getting fed up. This is not the age when people are forced to accept what is said to them. This is the age when information is readily available at your fingertips. By a simple Google search, someone can easily discern whether they are being misled or being advised properly. So let them be Eddie. I mean, uh, while it is important that we uh, provide credible information to the populace, uh, sometimes you have to not turn a blind eye, but provide your credible information and leave it there and move on. Because the responsible, you, you have other responsibilities and, and that is what sometimes should be focused on. I agree with you, Sais, and, and, and I'll heed your call because I think we've spent enough time uh, dis discussing the ignorance and stupidity and, and, and childishness of, of, of people like Harmon and the others. When we have a nation, we have a country to take care of, a country to run that is faced with a serious natural phenomenon in, 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 in the form of the flooding. Um, and we have so many other issues to deal with, including the COVID-19, the matters, the, the issues that really matter with regards to COVID-19, that is to provide tests for people and to provide vaccination for people so that we can come out of this pandemic as soon as possible. So I agree with you. And that, that has now brought us to our second major issue, which we want to discuss. I can say to you safely, says, with the limited information that is available thus far with regards to uh, the developments at the Ghana Elections Commission today, that many Guyanese, if not uh, maybe 90% or more, are breathing a sigh of relief. Not fully, because I don't think Guyanese are completely satisfied that um, the with the decision taken per se by GCOM today, where the three three of the riggers were sent packing. Um, because of the fact that they were sent on leave. But I think they're breathing a sigh of relief at the fact that they are no longer close to GCOM, even if it's temporary. The Ghana Elections Commission met today, and a decision was taken to send Roxon Myers, Pete Lowenfield, and of course, um, the other gentleman, um, I always, always get mixed up with his name, um, Mr. Mingo on annual leave, uh, at least to facilitate the debate on the motion. Sis, I'll bring you in here so that you can put perspective to this um, for the next half of our discussion. Eddie, I understand why you 
uh, why the name eludes you is because you attempted to put gentle in front of man in describing the person. I think that's that very misplaced of an adjective. So, Eddie, you'd recall that three weeks ago, uh, that is to say on the 1st of June, myself and Commissioners Shadik and Narayan presented three motions to the Ghana Elections Commission, which call for the immediate dismissal of the Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield, the Deputy Chief Elections Officer Roxanne Myers, and the Returning Officer for Region 4, Claremont Mingo. Detail in our, those motions were a litany of actions and omissions, acts and omissions of those persons which we feel justify their immediate removal. And this is not based on the opinion or the sole opinion of, the, of us three commissioners. These actions and in some cases omissions were pronounced upon by all of the courts of this country, uh, from the from the uh, High Court, the Court of Appeal, and the highest, the Apex Court, the Caribbean Court of Justice. That being said, the after those motions were laid, Justice Claudette Singh, the Chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, wrote to those persons, inviting them, uh, providing them 14 days within which to respond. Uh, to the allegations contained in those motions. There have been, there, all three of them have responded. Uh, the meeting was scheduled for last week and uh, two of the commissioners on the other side uh, provided an excuse which deprived the commission of a quorum. Excuse me. Uh, that being said, the, when the uh, when the when we met today, the opposition commissioners uh, raised several issues, uh, and in an effort to prevent a debate on the motion, one of those issues. Uh, one of those issues was that the Ghana Elections Commission was not uh, or ought not, the commission as presently composed, uh, ought not to deliberate on and, and eventually pronounce on those motions. Um, and instead, they suggested or, or uh, they suggested that some tribunal, some other tribunal, hears and determines those motions. Of course, this was rejected out of hand because the constitution which gives birth or gives rise or which gives the genesis to the Ghana Elections Commission also defines its functions. And one of the functions of the Ghana Elections Commission is the overall management, discipline, hiring, firing, etc. of staff of which these three persons are staff of the Ghana Elections Commission. So the very power, the very authority that they are claiming that we do not possess, in fact, vests, is vested within us by the Constitution. There was a raging debate back and forth on this issue. Uh, of course, of course, it is, it is clear, it is clear that the actions are of these three persons are condoned by the three commissioners who are on the other side, who stand ready to defend them at every juncture. You recall throughout that five month period, starting from as early as the first Mingo shenanigan on the 4th of March or 4th or 5th of March, 2020, they were still in his defense at every juncture Every time the chief election officer provided a faulty report, every time someone of them failed to carry out some one of their statutory duty, every time one of one of those officers uh, mangled their uh, 
mangled their statutory duty, they stood defended by these three commissioners. You would recall on the 14th of March, when the uh, then President Granger and leader of the opposition, Dr. Barr Jagdil, reached a consensus, reached an agreement brokered by uh, Prime Minister of, Trinidad, uh, for, of Barbados, Maya Motley, uh, in her capacity as chairman of CARICOM. They refused and then delayed in attending the meeting, instead seeking to meet with lawyers uh, who eventually, who eventually defended the very uh, actions of the, uh, of the rigors. They, uh, they even went so far as to, help, to hold a press engagement outside of the offices of those person, of, of those lawyers on that uh, fateful Saturday. So every step along the way, there was this cheerful readiness by those commissioners to condone and defend the actions of these persons whose sole intention was to thwart the will of the electorate. So today's action came as no surprise. Today's action was in fact expected. It was only, uh, it was only left to be seen the form in which the support of these three persons will come. Uh, after the elaborate discussion and, um, and to and fro arguments on the issue, the chairman opted and indicated to the commission that she will rule on this issue. One, whether uh, whether I, the commission was authorized and entitled to hear the motions against uh, the the three officers and and determine it, and or whether some other method, including uh, setting up a tribunal, some some extraordinary tribunal um, to hear it will be set up and so that a decision on that is pending and I will uh, I will address that in a second um, thereafter the chairman opted and uh, this was consensually and unanimously it wasn't objected to I should say uh, and to be correct it was not objected to by any commissioner, including uh, both sides, that the three officers will be sent on leave, uh, commencing, I believe it is Monday of next week. Um, during which time the decision will be heard, uh, will be made, and then the next steps uh, happen therefrom. Now, it is my hope, it is my hope that this is done in an expeditious manner because there's work that needs to be done by the commission and uh, the continued presence of those persons there affects stakeholder confidence in the in the organization as a whole and i believe by extension it stymies the ability of the commission to carry out its functions what well, is um and, and i hear you and i think and that is why I started by saying Guyanese were breathing a sigh of relief, but I, I, I think in a very measured way, uh, because there is or there was some sort of expectation that the actions are, are were going to be a bit more drastic. But one has to understand, and I understand clearly, that there has to be due process too at the level of the commission. Uh, you just can't, you know, you know, make decisions without allowing due process. I mean. The, the facts, the evidence are laying bare before the eyes of all. However, the process has to be followed. But I think a lot of Guyanese were more looking to see. Uh, and, and when you look at the commentary, you're hearing basically uh, people somehow are saying that these three persons were sent home. Fair enough. But they were sent home and they're being paid. I, I understand it's their annual leave. So I agree with you that um expeditiously this matter should be dealt with at the level of gcom um and the fact that there's still some concern that while they are being sent on leave there is still today is just tuesday we're heading into wednesday um but i trust that gcom as a commission has been able to to put the right systems in place to safeguard 
against any possible uh, things that can happen. However, I want to move to an issue that you would have highlighted first, and that is the support that will come. And it's an issue that we have to address now because the narrative will be the old narrative. It will be the old narrative. Yet another attempt to discriminate against Afro Guyanese. That is going to be the narrative from the opposition and, 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 their, and some of their supporters that here again is the PPP government trying to discriminate, to attack, and to victimize Afro Guyanese. And I made this point, I, I am not too sure, I think you were on the program with me. But I made this point before and I want to make it again. If one, if a, someone of a particular ethnic group commits a crime, commits a crime, you can't go and find somebody else from another ethnic group and arrest them and charge them just because you're fearful that somebody will say you're victimizing or you're attacking an ethnic group. The reality is at GCOM, you had three Afro Guyanese and top management in the Secretariat who were involved in attempts to rig the elections. You can't go and get a Chinese or an Amerindian or an Indo Guyanese and, um, and, 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 and charge them for a crime that somebody else committed, or, or where you have evidence laying there before you of a particular group. The reality is, and you will hear it, I'm telling you, before. Within the next 24 hours, you will hear that the PUP is setting the stage to, 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 to again victimize and attack Afro Guyanese. The reality is, we have a situation where we have elections. Many, many, many people in this country, majority of the citizens, political parties, including the PUP, has made it have made it clear that we cannot enter another elections, um, whether local government or general and regional elections with some of the people who are in the Secretariat of GCOM, people like Lowenfield, Myers, and Mingo, and the others. We saw what happened for five months. The world saw what happened for five months. Are you going to get your hands burnt and you're going to go again to allow the same people to play a role in the process? What do you expect to happen? What do you expect to happen? So I'm sitting, waiting patiently for the defenders to jump up, to come out and to jump on the bandwagon, to shout, oh, another attack on Afro Guyanese. GCOM has to be fixed. And I think all the stakeholders, all the stakeholders, save and except with those who almost benefited from the corruption and, and, and the attempted fraud. All the other stakeholders have agreed that GCOM's secretariat must, should, and I believe we're seeing signs, will be fixed to ensure that in the future we have elections in this country that are free and fair, transparent, where the will of the people will be respected. Because what we saw was a blatant attempt to, to, to subvert the will of the people and to, to, to install the AP and UAFC for a second term. And who were the key players? The key players, the foot soldiers in all of this were the people like Lewinfield, Mingo, and Myers, and a few others. Eddie, when you said earlier on that if an organization is predominantly staffed by one ethnic group and uh, something goes awry, you can't expect fingers to be pointed to some members of any other ethnic group if that uh, does not form a part of the sample group. But as I said previously on a, one of your own programs, if everything, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail the only tool that they have in their arsenal is race the only tool that they have in their arsenal is race and as a consequence it is only race that they will resort to at every single on every single occasion 
on every single occasion. You saw, you saw members of parliament and sympathizers of the opposition saying that if it was some African prince that touched down in Guyana um, and, and had brought vaccines, whether it would be the same posture that would have been taken by the government. What utter hogwash, right? Now that, as we have just discussed earlier on, that entire, that entire fabrication has now been mauled and dismantled uh, and they are still attempting to infuse aspects of race into that discussion. But when I spoke earlier on of the cheerful readiness of members of the opposition, including members of the commission to support and condone and defend these persons, you'd recall when they were first arraigned in the court um, for these offenses, the commissioners of the Ghana Elections Commission on the other side attended that those court hearings or at least stood outside the magistrate's court in defense and in solidarity with those persons. And mind you, I say this, I say this, um, and let me preface what I'm about to say by saying this. As an attorney at law, I respect everyone's right to have counsel of their choice. But it is more than passing strange that candidates, actual candidates um, of the opposition party were hired in some instances as lawyers to defend uh, those very persons who were charged with offenses related to the rigging activity during the elections. And proceeding therefrom, proceeding therefrom, I made this point on less than 24 hours ago on another program that all of the shenanigans, every single act or omission committed by uh, the, these, these persons, these rigors, was designed with one outcome in mind, one singular outcome. And that outcome was for a victory for a party, a, a contestant in the elections that did not secure that victory. And that, vic that, that being the AFC, APNU plus AFC. At no time did you hear a, a result that increased the number of votes for the Liberty and Justice Party. At no time did their actions reveal a victory for, for any other stakeholder. It was one, it was lopsided, it was one single tract. And, and that tells you something. That tells you something. And mind you, let me hasten to add this as well. Their actions was on display for the world to see. It was not, it, it was so shameless that it was not done in some back room where persons could not have access or could not have witnessed the dirtiness that they were trying to perpetuate. It was on display for the world to see and they, they seem not to care. And then today, today, they are asserting that there are no, uh, the allegations against them have not been proven. When Lowenfield, when Lowenfield uh, uh, was presented with live numbers after the recount, the recount exercise generated numbers publicly and he took it upon himself to disenfranchise in one uh, one instance, a hundred or something thousand voters, a hundred or seventy something thousand voters, I believe it was. On another occasion, a hundred or fifteen thousand voters on his own, on his own, without any legal authority to for doing so. All designed and catered for a victory for one particular party. Was, does he think that the world wasn't seeing this? Does he think that the world wasn't seeing this? When Claremont Mingo purported to make a declaration on the 5th of March 2020 without force, without force undertaking the steps that are statutorily defined, does he think that the world wasn't looking? Does he think that the multitude of persons who witnessed that firsthand were blind? When Roxanne Myers 
facilitated a meeting in Ashman's building, in Ashman's building on the morning of the 5th, hours before that declaration by Mingo, by a candidate of the, of, of the elections, um, Karen Cummings, who was a candidate for the AP and UAFC, who is now a, a, a member of parliament for that party. In that building, what, did they think that people were not seeing these things? Don't they think, and, and mind you, Eddie, we don't have to rely on my memory or your memory and my account or your account of, of these events. A lot of these events are memorialized on video. And so they were captured live and contemporaneously on social media. They were, they were captured for posterity and, and retrieval is so simple. It is at the click of a button. What? They think that our intelligence is so easy to be insulted that, that we would not, we would, or our memory is so shallow that we would, would sit there and condone this as though as how their handlers are condoning it? Come on. And it's for that reason, it's for that reason, you know, I, I, I keep going back to how Guyanese are feeling because I'm tracking the, 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 the sentiments that are being expressed on social media and otherwise where you know people want this to happen people want the situation to be resolved at gcom where those who attempted to steal the elections and i i don't think there is any better way you can put it it is simply an attempt a blatant attempt to steal the elections those who played a role must face the consequences and the consequences can be multi-layered and I think GCOM as a commission has a responsibility to the people of this country, to all the stakeholders, to ensure that it cleans its house and get rid of those who attempted to steal elections, those who were involved in those activities. The other layer of, of how this matter is to be treated is what is happening where criminal proceedings were instituted against those who were involved and there is tremendous amount of evidence as you pointed out um says that is available for everyone to see so we know the players it is not a case where the police has to to wonder how they will get the evidence the evidence is there you spoke with me uh but 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 in two attempts at the declaring by low and field one giving up new a two-thirds majority and without a second election or anything of that sort, it came down to a one-seat majority. And APNU wasn't concerned that, that Low and Field threw away uh, several seats for them, taking them down from about 40-something seats to just 33. They weren't concerned about that. And we saw Mingo, what he did at Ashman's building and what he did at, at, at GCOM headquarters. And in addition to facilitating that meeting, we saw Roxanne Myers chasing um, party observers, international observers, including uh, the GCOM commissioner from the Ashwins building, using the security forces to carry out that plan. You so know, Eddie, been... I, deliberately, I deliberately neglected to speak about that specific action of Roxanne Myers because it involved me and i think at the appropriate time uh at the appropriate time i will give as much details as possible but i want i i will ask rhetorically again whether they think that our memories are so shallow to forget those actions And, and they dare say that we that those allegations have not proven and uh, have not been proven and they are mere allegations. When Claremont Mingo was specifically told on the morning of the 13th of March by the Honorable Chief Justice Roxon George what he needed to do, and then hours later at High Street on that dirty bed sheet, uh, fluttering uh, the, 
the report of the EU Observer team um, describes it very aptly. It speaks of an undulating bedsheet. That undulating bedsheet um, with, a, with a less than effective uh, projector on it hurried, hurried through and then disappeared in a cloud of policemen preventing the uh, lodgement of any request for recount. Those things need to be proven. They were done in the, in the presence of the world. The world saw it. And then they dare say that they are innocent and, 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 they, and, and, and they somehow ought not to be held accountable for this? Oh, come on. I'm saying, you know, what is, I, I, I mean, this is a serious issue. This is an issue, this is an attack on a nation, on the democracy of a country, an attack on, on the rights of people, what happened uh, with the elections. But it's laughable sometimes when you look and you listen, you hear the reaction and the statements emanating from the handlers of, of Mingo and the others, where they look you in the face and say, oh, you're trying to attack these, these professional public servants. You're trying to attack these professionals because you can't find or get your way with them. I don't know what is professional about what you just mentioned. I don't know what is professional about um lowenfield hurriedly preparing a, a a declaration and trying to submit it to the commission without following uh due process without even allowing the commission i know the commission has a few steps that are to be followed in order um to finalize declaration um i don't know what is professional about ming uh lowenfield looking at the presidential candidate, then presidential candidate of the People's Progressive Party Civic, the then leader of the opposition, and all the leaders of the political parties and the international community present there, and trying to hoodwink them, trying to mislead them, trying to look them in the face and say, he cannot use a deputy returning officer to do a recon because that is not his preference. I don't know what is professional about Roxanne Myers, the two issues that we mentioned with her. I don't know what is professional about all the, all the issues that are there naked. And we haven't yet discussed, we haven't yet discussed the actions of the up and now opposition commissioners. We haven't yet discussed the actions of people like Valda Lawrence and Carol Joseph and all the others. And, and, and who were involved in this naked, blatant, bare-faced attempt, attempt to rig the elections. We haven't gone to all of that, and who facilitated them? How did Valda Lawrence's signature ended up on one of the declarations? How did Carol Joseph's signature ended up on one of the declarations? We haven't gone to all those issues. We're just touching a few issues. As far as I'm concerned, I think, you know, you know, let me make this point. Let me make this point. Let me make this point, Eddie. It is very clear from those two instances that you have just mentioned. That is to say, the appearance of the signature of Valda Lawrence on the first declaration and the signature of Carol Joseph on the second declaration. It shows that they were they just didn't hear. They had no regard or concern for the consequence of their actions. Mind you, a declaration does not require their signature on it. It does not require their signature on it. The circumstances leading to the appearance of their signature there, if that is not questionable enough, the fact that they were bold enough, the, they were bold enough to place their signatures there either speaks to high stupidity or blatant regard for what the law is and what their rights and responsibilities under the law are. Sis, uh, I think we're almost out of time. Uh, we, can, we can continue to have discussions on, on what happened over the, the, the five months um, and the struggles of Guyanese, Guyanese of all walks of life. Um, you know, I think after 
the fifth of March thereabout, or 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 if I, if I could stress it a little bit more, maybe after the thirteenth of of March, what happened? I think it changed the perspective of many Guyanese. Um, a large number of people who voted APNU because they were seeing signs of what our parents and grandparents told us. Um, says I, I, I suspect both you and I are not old enough to remember the days of, 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 of the PNC on the Barnum, but the stories were told to us and the history is there. Um, when you look at documentaries like Making of a Prime Minister and the others, the evidence is there of what took place. And I think a lot of people who voted for APNU, when they saw what was happening, they were seeing signs of the dark days of the Barnum era. And they turned out in their numbers. You saw a movement was birthed as a result of the actions of the PNC, where Guyanese were determined. They were, you know, binding together regardless of political affiliation to defend democracy of this country um so if we were to continue those discussions we may need a few hours but i'm going to give you maybe a minute or two to wrap things up sis well eddie we touched on two very important issues tonight um while it may appear as though the elections issue and the occurrences at gcom today may uh, be the more important of the two issues I want to say that that was the lesser of the two uh, issues because we, while persons need to be held accountable for their actions, and I believe that today's occurrences are further steps to ensure that those persons are held accountable. What is more important to me is that it is the health and well-being of, of our nation and my fellow citizens, and. It peeved me to know that uh, someone, and my, my social media posts uh, made shortly after Harmon made that statement, quoted leaders in uplifted commas, and it was, there was a reason for that. Because you can't call yourself a leader when you will readily and willingly lead your followers or lead your supporters or lead your constituents to harm, and that is exactly what he was advocating. Because as we are presently circumstanced, the uh, the vaccines and, and, and mass vaccination uh, seems to be the closest to panacea that we can muster in our society. And we ought to take every step to encourage that rather than uh, militate against it. And that's exactly what Joseph Harmon did. So the fact that today we are able to provide information to the public that readily debunks that that uh, that myth and that misinformation that he was peddling pleases me, and I'm hoping that the general public, the general populace who's uh, who has benefited from this new information, uh, would 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 use it and use it. Uh, in a manner that will benefit our nation, that is to say, to avail themselves to the vaccination, get vaccinated, and take the other precautions that um, are advocated to get us out of this COVID-19 pandemic. It is the responsibility. I read something today, which uh, I think Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN was quoted as saying, um, soon we will have uh, the world divided into two segments, the vaccinated and the infected. You choose, you choose, Guyana, which side of the divide you want to stand on. And uh, on that note, Eddie, I'm going to thank you for having me on this evening. Thanks, Asis. And I want to wrap on this note where I encourage uh, uh, citizens to maybe visit those who have access to the internet, to visit the BBC web the BBC's website. And there is a big story there. Um, it's, it's shared on, on, on my Facebook page as well, where it talks about COVID vaccines running out in poorer nations. And this is coming from the WHO, the same WHO that Harman and the others want um, to, 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 to deal with, with, with the approval of the vaccines. They're, they're warning the world that the, the, the vaccines are running out in poorer nations. You know, we're maybe just about what? So, in Africa, 
just about 2% of the population in the entire Africa, just about 40 million doses were administered there. The reality is the vaccines, and I want to join with you, says, to encourage, I think the, the matter has been put to rest to some extent, and we'll continue to expose any attempts uh, to disparage uh, the, 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 this effective program that we have. But the vaccines are important. We encourage people to ensure that you're vaccinated. Says, thanks for being part of the program, and to our viewers, we want to say thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Thank you, Eddie. Have a good evening, all.